The Trump administration is facing a tough decision right now. To sanction or not to sanction. Now, normally the answer to this is so obvious America would be googling new things to refuse to buy from Iran before he could even finish asking the question. But in this case, it's a little more complicated. Because we caught Russia violating our Venezuelan sanctions red handed. Well, caught's a little bit of a strong word. We more looked over and saw, hey, Russia's continuing to do business with Venezuela. We were able to get a good look at those red hands, so they gave us the finger and continued to ignore us. The question facing our treasury today is, uh, should we do something about this? Now, before we get to the arguments of both sides of this issue, let me give you a little background on what Russia is doing in Venezuela. Because this whole controversy centers around one company, Rosneft, a Russian oil company. Wow, Russia and oil? No wonder this administration is getting gold feet. So what's Rosneft doing in Venezuela? Well, if you look at their exports, they're about as diverse as a 90s sitcom. No wonder America wants to give you guys a democracy so badly. It's all oil. They now have the largest oil reserves in the world and Rosneft has taken note. Russia's top oil producer Rosneft is going to increase its 16.7% holding in Venezuela's Petro Monagas joint venture to 40% in return for a near 13 billion euro investment in the OPEC members' oil and gas sectors. This is where I want to take a step back. Because, well, Venezuela has oil and a state owned oil company. Where does a foreign oil company fit into this? Well, Russia is essentially engaging in a money laundering scheme, except in this case, instead of money, it's oil. The Russians have been willing to absorb the risk of sanctions. They're chartering vessels owned by third parties and obscuring the origin of the crude as they market it around the world. Let's just dump this Venezuelan oil into a batch from Siberia, stir it up a little bit and now what Venezuelan oil? This right here, it's an international blend. You can legally buy it from us. US officials and industry analysts say Russian state companies, chiefly its state controlled oil giant Rosneft, are now handling 70 to 80% of Venezuela's total exports. Considering oil is pretty much the only thing Venezuela exports, Russia is making a killing on this scheme, as they're able to get huge discounts and charging fees for legal access to the international markets. Beyond oil laundering, Rosneft has two other prominent schemes with Venezuela. First, what if you combine the concept of cash for gold with payday loans? Essentially creating a company that makes the mafia look like a consumer friendly loan alternative. This would basically sum up a second arm of Rosneft's interactions with Venezuela. The Moscow based company controlled by Russian President Vladimir Putin's government has loaned $6.5 billion to Venezuela in exchange for oil. And the last arm of their interactions. In a problem that is truly representative of how broken Venezuelan government is, yes, they have a bunch of oil, but it's all crude oil. They lack the ability to refine it into something that you could put into a car to make it run. Them bragging about being an oil giant would be like a desert country bragging about their agricultural industry because they have a ton of seeds. So are you going to eat those seeds or are you going to sell them to someone who can actually turn it into something worthwhile? Venezuela used to refine its own petrol, but years of neglect and underinvestment have made the country dependent on imports. There are now supply shortages and long queues at fuel stations in most parts of the country. Venezuelan gasoline supplies depend on Russia, said a person familiar with the supply deal. The day Russia stops supplying gasoline, Venezuela grinds to a halt. So now that we know what Russia is doing, what are we going to do about it? To sanction or not to sanction? There are a variety of considerations to weigh here, starting with Trump's State of the Union. The United States is leading a 59 nation diplomatic coalition against the socialist dictator of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro. Maduro is an illegitimate ruler, a tyrant who brutalizes his people, but Maduro's grip on tyranny will be smashed and broken. Heck yeah, we're going to destroy their economy by blocking all their exports. 
Except petroleum. You can kiss your acrylic alcohol industry goodbye. Well, there's no suggestion that Rosneft has breached US sanctions against Venezuela, the supply arrangement makes Rosneft and the Kremlin one of the single biggest hurdles to US plans to spur regime change in Caracas. Essentially, we're saying, Maduro, you're grounded. Well, we already RSVP'd to that party, so it'd be rude not to go. Can't take your phone away because I need it to talk to you. No dessert tonight, though. Although, if you don't eat it, I will. Well, you can't eat it in your room. Ha! Maximum pressure. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not taking a stand here as to whether we should push for regime change in Venezuela. You can all caps lock scream at each other in the comments about that one. What I am saying is, since that seems to be our goal, this is a gaping hole in the strategy. With that in mind, what's the worry? Let's plug that hole. Well, now would be a good time to point out that, in the wake of US sanctions on Venezuela, Russia has become the second largest source of American oil imports. The nation's crude and oil product exports to the United States climbed to 20.9 million barrels last October. Whoa, 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 maybe we shouldn't bite the hand that feeds us, just because it's feeding us unethically sourced petroleum. The concern for America dates back to a similar conflict from the faraway date of 2018. Oleg Deripaska was sanctioned last year along with his aluminum company Rusal, its parent company N Plus, and another firm. That's right, America was going to take Russian oligarch Oleg Deripaska to task for, well, if there was a list of crimes, this guy would be looking for the all of the above option. America is concerned with election interference, world anti-doping agency hacking, and other malign activities. Of course, other malign activities include ordering hits on rival businessmen, illegal wiretapping, bribery connections of the Russian mob, and all that other fun stuff. This guy could have walked right off of any 1970s James Bond film. Steve Mnuchin's plan was... Well, we're gonna force the world not to buy aluminum from this guy's aluminum producing company anymore, cause he's majority owner. That's right, we're gonna take a stand. Unfortunately, one thing we didn't realize when we were getting all hyped up on justice was, if everybody stops buying from companies where Oleg was the majority shareholder, things might start to get expensive fast. As Bloomberg reported at the time, What's happened to aluminum prices? They've gone crazy, jumping more than 20% since April 5th, the day before the sanctions were announced, and reaching the highest since 2011. Turns out, as much as we hated Russian oligarch criminals, 20% on aluminum? I don't know. We were getting serious pressure from Europe to remove those sanctions because the price of metal was getting way too expensive for their factories. Hey, these weird boxy cars aren't going to build themselves. The EU even wrote a strongly worded letter to Congress, which I think is the bureaucratic equivalent to a declaration of war. In the end, after Deripaska refused to step down, we forced him to transfer shareholder majority control to his kids, and then continued our campaign of justice elsewhere. So why do I mention this? Well, the worry is, if sanctions on a Russian aluminum company could shoot commodity prices up 20% worldwide and lead to international backlash, what the heck would sanctions on a huge oil company do? Quick side note, if you have to ask the question, would I be willing to pay 20% more for gas in order to destroy a foreign government, you might not be the most committed to that cause. Maybe sit that one out. A senior Trump administration official told SNP Global Platz that the US was prepared to sanction Rosneft if it continued to trade crude oil and fuel with Venezuela. But analysts say those sanctions have yet to be imposed because of the expected impact they might have on the global oil market. So that's exactly what's going on with Russia and Venezuela right now. I guess the question is. Do we as a country hate Maduro so much that we're willing to take shots at the global oil supply in order to bring regime change? Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube! First I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. 
And if you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.